Hey, I'm Dr. Austin Perlmutter. I have been getting a whole lot of people asking me about this recent study connecting erythritol with brain health outcomes. What are the best or the worst sugars and how does sugar as well as artificial sweeteners relate to brain health? And I'm gonna post a blog on this topic right away, but I wanted to give you a quick update on my thinking around this subject. So the first thing to consider is that your brain runs on sugar. And I know there's a lot of conversation around things like keto and other ways to bypass this, but realize that glucose is the primary fuel source for your brain. Your brain is two to 3% of your body weight, but uses up about 20% of its energy. So it needs a good amount of glucose, of sugar, in order to run. That's really important because sugar has become synonymous with toxic, bad, all the other things. It's a whole lot more nuanced as to what it actually does in the body and you need and want sugar in your body. But that doesn't mean you need or want additional sugar in your diet. So let's talk about what sugar in diet is and some of the alternatives to conventional sugar and how that relates to brain health. Most of the time when we think about sugar in diet, the way it used to be prior to the modern day is that sugar is in essence carbohydrate. Those carbohydrates are existing within the matrix of something like a fruit or a vegetable. So if you had a carrot, there are sugars in there, but those sugars are locked up in the fiber and the other nutrients. So when you eat a carrot, it doesn't necessarily spike your blood sugar in the way that drinking a carrot juice might. In the spectrum of things that people have discussed as it relates to sugar, many people kind of lean towards the idea that added sugars, specifically things that are found in our beverages, are bad for our brain health. And that's important because Though our brains do run on glucose, it doesn't mean that we're going to benefit our brains by consuming excess glucose or sugar in general. There are multiple forms of sugar that comes as an added sugar. So while our brains need sugar, they don't need us to add sugar into our diet to get sufficient sugar, specifically glucose, to function at an optimal level. Now, as it relates to sugar, as far as the quality of sugar around brain health, you know, a lot of people talk around about, well, it's natural sugar versus table sugar. It's brown sugar versus white sugar. I honestly think a lot of this conversation is us trying to avoid a hard truth, which is any form of added sugar is kind of unnecessary and probably is not ideal for our health. There is some data suggesting that certain types of what we call, I guess, natural sugars are better than other types of natural sugar. So for example, evaporated cane sugar, which is kind of the classic sugar you get in a packet, can raise our blood sugar more than, for example, maple syrup or honey. Uh, honey and maple syrup also have additional nutrients like antioxidants and vitamins and minerals, which may help to offset some of the negative consequences associated with consuming these added sugars. But realize that whether it's a tablespoon of maple syrup, a tablespoon of uh, basically pick your added sugar, so coconut sugar, Agave is kind of a unique one because of the fructose, but most added sugars that you're going to put in, natural or otherwise, they are going to spike blood sugar. And one of the things that we know is that when blood sugar goes up and down, when we constantly kind of pull in a whole bunch of unnecessary additional uh, sugar from our diet, that it's probably not good for our metabolic health and has been associated with negative brain outcomes. So point I'm making there is there are a ton of forms of natural sugar some of them might be a little better than others, but I don't think it would be the case, at least in my perspective, to say that, you know, as long as it's maple syrup or honey, you can just eat as much as you want. I don't think that's what the research says. I think in general, the goal would be to minimize added sugars in any form. Now, the other part of this conversation is if we kind of agree we don't want to spike our blood sugar, we don't want to eat things that are super sweet that occur in nature, well, Maybe we should be talking about artificial sugars or sugar alcohols or natural sugar kind of extracts, or I should really say sweeteners because they're not exactly sugars. So let's break this down. Some of the more common artificial sweeteners, they're not exactly sugars, are things like aspartame and sucralose. And how do these things work? Well, in the case of, for example, sucralose, uh, basically a chlorine ion or atom is added to a sugar molecule in a way that makes it uh, not contain calories. Our bodies can't use it for calories. Um, these are molecules that have been around a bit longer and research is now revealing that there are some associations uh, between consumption of these artificial sugars and negative health kind of mechanisms in our body. 
I don't think we can consistently say that people who consume these molecules are directly getting health outcomes worse because of them, but mechanistically there is some indication that things like uh, sucralose, which for example has been linked to insulin resistance uh, in humans, may not be the best way to go as it relates to consuming sugar alternatives. So then you get to sugar alcohol, xylitol, erythritol, and obviously a lot of buzz right now specifically around erythritol. These are, in essence, um, they can be found in nature, they're in certain fruits and vegetables, and our bodies can make uh, erythritol, for example. But um, the question is, at eating these molecules in levels thousands of times higher than what would usually be found in, for example, a fruit, what we would consume in nature, is that good for us? There's some mechanistic data saying that these molecules may have positive effects on various aspects of our metabolism that could correlate with better brain health. There's this recent study, which I've discussed at length uh, in my recent social post and on my blog. But I would say this, while there's some mechanistic data suggesting that they may not be concerning and that they may be actually positive for our health, um, you know, we are understanding is that many people have some GI effects from these sugar alcohols and that they might impact the microbiome. And then the last kind of grouping of these uh, sweetener molecules would be things like stevia, monk fruit, and to some extent, allulose, uh, things that are found in nature, but that have been kind of uh, amped up as far as how they're produced. So you're getting a much more concentrated dose. Uh, in, in contrast with something like aspartame, sucralose, you know, these aren't necessarily lab derived, even though usually you have to work on these molecules in a lab to get the type of extract that would be what you'd find in a bottle. There is some data suggesting potential health benefits for some of these molecules, um, stevia uh, and allulose, for example. But I would just put forth again, we don't know exactly what these things do in the long run because we just don't have the data, specifically interventional and randomized trials that looks at what happens when we eat these versus eating other things. Um, there is some data suggesting that people who consume artificial sugars uh, may actually gain significant amount of weight, even though that's the opposite of what they're supposed to do. There's some data suggesting that they may gain more weight than people who eat normal sugars, but then other data contradicts this. So let me see if I can put all of this into perspective. We now know what we eat definitely changes our brain outcomes. We know that having metabolic dysfunction, which is thought to be a result of consuming too much of simple carbohydrates and added sugars is bad for our brain health. We know that overall reducing added sugars is a good plan. And I would say, even though there's some signal that certain types of added sugars, maple syrup and maybe honey being good versions of that, um, may not be as bad as table sugar, there's still a data suggesting that those are not necessarily great for your metabolic health. When it comes to non-nutritive sweeteners or things that don't really add calories, don't really spike your blood sugar, I would say, you know, it's still early. We don't know exactly. There's probably going to be data coming out in the years to come that will question either health-related or disease-related outcomes as a function of these. The, the three that kind of stand out for me that seem, based on the research I've seen, to be most consistent as far as not having a downside, uh, stevia, monk fruit, and allulose, but again, we'll learn more in the years to come. The main takeaway I would put forth as it relates to sugar consumption and the correlations with various metabolic outcomes and brain function is, as much as possible, try to look to consume your sugar in its actual unprocessed form. So if you're adding anything that is basically an added sugar, that includes looking on the back of your foods, looking at the ingredient list, looking to see whether um, sugar has been snuck in or the nutrition facts, whether there's added sugars and trying to avoid those things that have added sugars. That also includes not adding additional sweeteners to your foods and trying to sensitize your taste buds to be excited about things that are not ridiculously sweet. I think those are good calls. I think eating fiber, eating protein along with those sugars is a good call as it relates to mitigating some of the potential risk associated with sugar consumption. And if you are going to use a sugar alternative, just realize we don't know exactly what the long-term risks and benefits might be because in most of these cases, even though some of these molecules have been around for a long time, you know, stevia comes from a plant, that plant isn't new, we haven't necessarily created the concentrates, the extracts that people are consuming, uh, especially in the combinations they tend to be sold in in the stores. So I am a big fan of trying to reduce your uh, 
kind of threshold for tasting sweet, which means overall decreasing sugar intake. I think that reducing added sugars is one of the most consistently studied benefits, especially around beverages. Beverages, sugary, sweetened beverages, tend to be one of the most consistently linked to uh, negative health outcomes. And maybe just the most important message of all is try to get most of your calories from actual foods, not from processed foods. So whether it's a keto bar or some sort of a energy drink or whatever else people would need to include these artificial, natural, or other sweeteners in, realize that if it is heavily processed, there is good reason to try to say, find another option, and the sugar is just part of that story. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you are interested to learn more, if you go to austinpromoter.com backslash blog, I'm posting a lot about this and you can read more about this subject. Thanks for listening.